Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. Now, today I want to talk a little bit more about section surface. And uh, I broached the subject a little bit ago, and uh, I just want to get into how powerful it is, and uh, more reasons as to why you really want to use section surface. It's, again, a, a fairly incredible operator. So what I've done, just to sort of speed things up, is I've got a spline on the ZX plane, and I've got a spline on the XY plane, and I just created a curve line, just a regular little line for a spine curve. Yeah, I can use a vector. I sure can, but uh, I'm just me, sometimes I like using an actual uh, input, like a line in this case. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of additional elements here. I'm going to take these two curves. Now, I've talked about this method in a previous video as far as relationships with some primary curves or some primary elements. So imagine I'm making a center console. We're going to have a slightly curved or a convex surface on the top, same thing on the side. So uh, what I've done is I've generated these two curves and uh, this could be used for anything. A hood surface, you could do this for uh, an armrest door surfaces. I've done this where I have a up door upper where the best way to get this shape was to uh, have uh, three curves set up and then drive a surface through those three curves uh, for like a door upper. But this, this method will work pretty well for uh, several areas. Now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into curve. I'm going to offset curve and I'm going to offset this curve. And uh, I'll just go in 15 millimeters down and I'm going to pick this curve and deselect this curve and select OK, 15 and 15. Now that I have those curves in, I'm going to go in and combine these. Now that I have that combined, I'm going to mirror this curve across that plane. Now that I have those, those are going to act as my theoreticals. Okay. Again, remember, uh, this surface that I'm going to create is going to have the high point at its peak somewhere. It's down the center line of the vehicle, right? So we want to make sure that our highest point is this curve. This actually hits that curve. Now, I'm going to go into surface. I'm going to go to section. Here I'm going to use circular and three point. Curve one, curve two, curve three. Spine curve, that line. And what I'm going to do to simplify this surface that's going to be generated a little bit, I'm going to talk about span control in another video or segment control. If I leave this at none and whoops, helps to hit my OK button. There we go. If I leave this at none, which I'm going to do right now, and I'm going to go into analysis, I'm going to pick that, show polls, show, show knots, you'll see I get a, a, a kind of a complex surface, not simp the simplicity that I want off of a surface. So I'm going to double click on it. And for this one, V rebuild, I'm just going to say auto fit. And you'll notice that if I bring this down a little bit, here, let me bring this off of my other screen. It's saying it doesn't fit based off of that tolerance, but if I bring it up, it'll fit. So you can see in um, this direction, it's relatively simple. This direction is a little bit more complex, but I expect that kind of complexity. So if you have a, a, a tight tolerance here, obviously you're going to have to increase the amount of rebuild. But uh, I'm going to leave everything as is, and you can see I have a nice balance. I've gotten rid of all of the additional segments. Now that I have my primary curve up there, next thing I want to do is I want to draw in another surface from here to here. Surface. Go back into section. And once again, it's going to be a circular surface, but it's going to be a two-point radius. Section one, or I'm sorry, guide one, not section. The section is determined by the type here. Guide 2, pick my spine. Now it's giving me an error because of a value that I don't I need to increase. 
So I'll make it really big. Just take a look at it. And as you can see, it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to reverse the spine. Once I reverse the spine, it goes to the correct orientation and direction. And uh, if it's not enough or it's too much, you can always adjust that value. And again, you have a law value there. So that's closer to what I want. I'm going to leave uh, rebuild off. And I'm going to come in and analyze this. And as you can see, once again, I have segments. I don't particularly care for those segments. So I'm going to say auto fit for rebuild. And it's going to simplify it again. So again, if I reduce this too much, you'll notice it doesn't want to fit within those tolerances. So there I have my initial uh, surfaces. You see how easy it is to get those. If I come in here and I mod make a modification to that, I have, again, circular surfaces. And because I have circular surfaces, very nice, clean, driven parametrically through those curves. And again, if I want to, I can come in to uh, one of these curves, let's say I go into this one, I can change this to, let's say, a linear value. All right, so that projection comes up, combined curve projection comes up and, and now has that additional shape to it. So it does a really great job. These surfaces are very nice, very clean. You can see across center line, it's gonna be perfectly balanced because it's a circle. I hit my center line curve the way that I want. And um, it, so I have basically the aesthetics of those surfaces that I need. Now, again, it'd be just simply tweaking these curves to get the true shape that you want. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just slap something out really quick if I'm working off of a point cloud and I don't really care how close it is, you know, three, four, five, six mils off. I don't care. I'll go back and adjust those curves to make everything fit once I have a nice, easily morphable shape. Uh, let's just undo that. Okay, next thing you need to do is create a, a blend through this area. And again, this isn't this is since this is a section surface, I'm going to use all section surfaces to define this blend. Uh, I'm going to go back into surface. I'm going to go back into section. This time I'm going to use another circular, but I'm going to use center and radius. Pick that my spine uh, it's a little big we'll say 25 there we go and for this I just need this to be a, a sheet it doesn't have to be a solid select OK now you'll notice that this doesn't reach all the way across this in, this surface here and over here it's um, a little bit bigger and this one's a little bit smaller but I want that surface it's just me I like to see these things uh, be you, everything needs to be larger than um, than the actual elements or up to the maximum extent of the elements. That's what I like to do. So for this, it's simple. I just go into enlarge, pick this, uh, resize all, and just simply grow this guy a little bit. There we go. And now I can just hide that. Now that I have that in there, it's a simple to go into curve, I want to intersect this to this, this to this. Let me go ahead and hide that. And those are my now, uh, or those are my intersection curves now, right? So this is these are the, the pipe that I'm using to drive my blend. So if I go back into surface, let me change the color of these. use strong carrot for you. Now I'm going to come in, go back into section surface and this is where I'm going to go into cubic and I'm going to use fillet bridge and and as I said this is personally in the olden days before we had all sorts of these uh, tools like the, the the additional shape blend and aesthetic face blend and all these other things this was one of the more powerful tools to use and quite frankly I still like it because it's simplicity so for this I have my start guide I have my end guide I have my start surface for shape control and my end surface for shape control and then just like that it puts it in 
Now you'll notice it doesn't ask for a spine as a requirement, but because I have the other curves or the other surfaces defined by the spine, I'm just going to go ahead and add it in. With this tool here, you'll notice that I have continuity, G3, G3 flow. I also have a depth. So if I take a look at my depth, you'll notice I can take this and really affect this the peak or that depth. It's still going to be G3, and you also have a skew on this. So you can pull it to one side or pull it to the other side. So this is one of the reasons why I really like this tool is because it's got so much power, so much capability. And for this, I'm just going to simply select OK. Now that I have that in, I'm going to go back into analysis, pick my surface, and poles and knots. Now you'll see here I've got knots and those are my control points. It does a really nice job, very clean, right? So if I double click on this now and let me scroll down a little bit, I'm going to go into auto fit and it's going to create slight little deviation on surface, but it's going to simplify it. You'll notice everything fits to within the tolerance select OK and I've simplified that surface even more now let me go ahead and hide this that's that center curve so as you can see I have all of these control points need to be there in order to drive the shape if I double click on it and I drag this down a little bit see those control points reorganize themselves based off of those inputs so now that I have that let me show it's just a simple question of going through and um, at this point symmetrying over the blend fillet bridge and then trimming everything up. There you go. And like that, you have some incredibly clean surfaces. So let me go into analysis. Let me pick these. Let me turn that off. Um, I'm going to go into reflection. So we have some good looking surfaces there. You can see I have my G3 acceleration coming across. Um, let me go into line images. There we go, and as you can see, very nice transitions, very clean, simple surfaces. And if I need to make a modification to this, it's real easy because I've got those lovely parameters. It's it's very very quick for this for these for these shapes. It does it does a bang up job actually. Oops, not 300. That's fine. 34 is fine. And uh, again, because of the nature of the shapes that I used, I have very clean, very natural shapes that lend themselves well to not only parametrics, but to aesthetics. So that's one of the reasons why I really like the section surface function. And there's a lot more that I'm going to talk about with this operator. So stay tuned. If you like the video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. I really like comments, so please feel free to say what you want to say. Again, thanks.